Once again, I wake up with somebody flapping their ears behind me, somebody snarling their teeth. Jeez Louise, it never ends. John, how are you today? How are you today, fella? Well, I'll tell you this. I will have the cleanest ears of any vlogger you guys have ever watched after having this guy. Unbelievable. <sighs> I'm going to have to get up, make some coffee, and get ready for my MRI. Unbelievable. Days with Jordan the Lion starts. <sighs> Damn. This is what 9 a.m. looks like today. I got to get, get ready to hop on a train and go downtown for an MRI. Fun stuff. Uh oh, the sky took a turn for the worse. It's gotten awful cloudy awful quick. Wouldn't you know it? Think back, friends. The last time I went to the doctor, what happened? Monsoon, windows blowing off skyscrapers, calamities of the apocalyptic fashion. Oh man, I hope this is not my Sunday. And I hope it doesn't start raining all day. Yep, it ain't looking good. They're having a farmer's market down here, downtown. Oh, this guy's got all kinds of cool stuff. All kinds of beads and stuff. And we're right here by the Alexandria, where countless people have lived. I actually popped in the Alexandria for just a second because I thought, um, somebody had told me they used to have a, a list inside on the wall of all the people that lived there and what room they lived in, but uh, I walked in and asked and the guy said it's not there anymore. I was gonna say, I, I thought that if I missed it last time, it must not have been here. Now I know a lot of people that watch my videos love when I find old pictures and match them up and I actually found one so I took a little bit of a detour out of my way so that I can match it up for you guys. So the photo I found would have matched up right here. You would have seen a train car right there on the side of the Alexandria. Right there. Isn't that something? Well, since I was back down here today, I decided to come to Clifton's again because they did a little research on the history and wow, what a fantastic history it is. Since you got the nightlife, now let's check out the cafeteria during the day. Well, here we are, back for a day trip. And you know, this is so cool because I knew eventually I'd come back down here. I just didn't think I would do it the very next day, but you know what, this place is amazing. When I started looking into the history, it was founded by a guy named Clifford Clinton. And you guessed it, that's how he got the name. He put his names together. Clifford Clinton became Clifton's. And there actually used to be eight of these. It was so successful, there were eight of them around Los Angeles. And this is the only one left. This is the second one that he founded. It was called Clifton's at the Brookside. Um, and then he eventually changed it just to Clifton's Cafeteria. And you know what's so cool about this is that the guy who founded this um, he founded it, well, he was basically five generations in of a family who had owned and operated restaurants. His great-grandfather ran one in Missouri. His grandfather had moved to San Francisco and started one. His father took over that, and then eventually Clifford and uh, some friends would take over that one. And then he moved down here, and he started this up based off of his religious beliefs in a weird way is that this was known as the cafeteria of the golden rule at one point. And the theory or the story behind that was that he believed nobody should ever go hungry. And so if you didn't have money to pay or if you only had very little money to pay, he would still feed you with no problems. In fact, where I remember first hearing about it was, um, was that Charles Bukowski would talk about coming here when he had no money and that you could get, um, a great meal for, for literally pennies. Um, but this is the, the largest cafeteria in the entire world, if you can believe that. Um, but even Ray Bradbury had, had mentioned this place.
when he was getting started and he had no money, he used to come down here um, in his early days. And Forrest Ackerman, who um, we all know Forrest, I've done vlogs on Forrest, he started um, Famous Monsters of Filmland and uh, was basically the grandfather of science fiction, even coined the term science fiction. The science fiction writers of America would have their meetings here. And uh, Ray Bradbury actually had his 89th birthday here in 2009. That's how special this place was. And they all came here for the same reason, because this guy would feed you if you had no money. He actually believed, Clifford believed, that if you, um, if you fed people, it would come back to uh, reward you in the greater good, in which he was actually right. He believed that you only needed to make a half a cent off of each customer. And um, they said it, in a, in a 90 day span, he had spent $10,000 in free meals to people. Um, and then eventually opened a penny cafeteria a few blocks away that, um, that would also help feed people. And um, you know what's pretty cool about this is that he made so much money in just a, like 20 years that he ended up selling the interest of this place during World War II to his kids, um, his three kids, let them run it for the rest of, uh, till like 2010, I believe. And uh, when he retired, he actually started up a nonprofit organization called Meals for Millions and spent the rest of his life with his wife um, trying to feed all the malnourished and poor people of the world, um, and especially during World War II. So it's a pretty fascinating story that this place has. And each of the eight different places all had a real theatrical or outlandish kind of theme to them. And we were in it this last night, so we know this one's the Cabinets of Curiosities. But in 2010, the family ended up selling this to a guy who wanted to turn it into a nightclub, as we saw last night. He shut it down, and for about three years, he spent uh, $10 million into renovating this whole place, reopened it, and you saw what the nightclub was like. Now let's go check out what the cafeteria is like. And see, 35 cent cocktails. In fact, uh, Ray Bradbury said they came here because they could get free limeade and lemonade whenever they wanted. All right, here we go. Into the cafeteria portion today, which we didn't get to do yesterday. Kind of hard with all this glass, but they have all kinds of mementos and pictures and... Clifton's Brookdale. Oh, maybe it was called Clifton's Brookdale. Maybe not Brookside. Wow. I have no idea what I'm going to have today. But they said you can walk around and look before you buy anything, so. Orange aid. I may have to eat one of the pot pies. That looks amazing. Wow, they have brunch. I'm gonna have to get brunch stuff now. Wow, they have a, a carving line, of course. Oh, God, everything looks good. Oh, I'd love some meatloaf. That looks great, too. Sure. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. Well, since I came for brunch before my uh, doctor's appointment, they have a jazz band here playing. It's a little bit more lit up, so when I get done eating and get done talking to this bear, we'll go roaming around and see if we can't get some better look at the inside. 
You know, as I was walking around, I did notice there are people in here not eating, just sitting down, watching the jazz with a book. So it seems like they still kind of have that mentality of just anybody is welcome, which is pretty cool. I don't know that they feed everybody for free, but I do know that it's a pretty cool, relaxed environment. The meatloaf is actually really good. I haven't had meatloaf in probably, gosh, probably five years at least. I really wanted the chicken pot pie, but I just felt like, well, I haven't had meatloaf, and nobody says I can't ever come here again. In fact, I would highly recommend this place to anybody coming from out of town. Definitely come here. This is, like, a pretty unique experience. I think everybody would enjoy it. Everybody in a family would, at least. All right, since it's a little bit more lit up in here today instead of the way it was last night, let's go walk around. Big hole in the wall. Call me crazy, but I like it. Well, check out this. Check out this chair. It's like something out of Beetlejuice. And they even have a piano. Wow, look at all these chairs, man. That is awesome. It's like wood carved chairs. Wow. I have kind of a, not private room, but it's like kind of in its own little cubby hole back here with a cuckoo clock. But check that out. Taxidermy bear in there. Look, they took one of the panelings out of this uh, this wall right here and turned it into a seat. Isn't that weird? Oh, I love this place. See, I couldn't do any of this stuff last night, so I'm kind of glad I came back now. There's the base of the tree that we saw last night. That's actually the base of the whole thing. It goes all the way through all four floors of this place. The bar. The bar's got a little bear. Oh, look at all the seats. The footrests are uh, mushrooms. Whoa, so cool. I didn't see any of this last night. Now, the only downside is that, uh, those bears, is that during the day, they don't have any of the upstairs open. So all that stuff that we saw last night, there's actually a tiki room I couldn't get into last night because the fourth floor, you had to put your name on a reservation and it was like totally packed when I got there, so I couldn't go in. But we, uh, the fourth floor is like a tiki room. So we'll have to come back sometime and see the fourth floor tiki room. But right now, all they have open is the uh, first and second floor. And a little wishing well. Let me see if I have any change. Nope, I emptied it all out. My one chance at fame and fortune and getting a wish to come true has been destroyed by my own doing. Check this place out. If you're ever in Los Angeles, you gotta come here. Magic water. Through ages of terrific volcanic and mineral pressure became impregnated with rare and enduring qualities. It appears green. They pretty much have that little uh, cool reservoir thingy going all the way around. Because this is where we entered. And uh, this is where we shall leave. Good times. Now let's get out of here. I have a doctor's appointment. Hands down, one of the most interesting places I've ever been into to have a meal. Right up there with Medieval Times. I mean, Medieval Times will always win that, but this was very cool for downtown Los Angeles. So seeing as how I already showed you guys Clifton's yesterday, I had to show you this little street. It's a street that's tucked away kind of in an alleyway, but it is pretty fantastic. It's basically like, during the week, 
they have a lot of uh, tables out here right on the um, street and it's basically a replication of being in France. Isn't that something? Or at least it's all European themed. I love this. And I happen to be walking by because I uh, they recently put a Burlington Coat Factory in here <laughs> to really uh, class up the, the joint. And um, see, it's called St. Vincent Court if you're ever looking for it. Um, and I popped in to buy some of that tea that I've been drinking. And uh, I was like, oh, that's right, St. Vincent Court's over here. I forgot that's what it was called. I just remembered, I'm like, oh, that street that looks like Europe is down here. So let's go take a little bit of a look and show you guys what's down here. And then I'm gonna, like I've said before, work my way over to my doctor's appointment. But this one over here, I really love. I mean, I love them all. And if you can believe it, I've never actually um, eaten over here. Before I started doing the vlog, I really never spent a whole lot of time during the week down here. Maybe a couple times a year if I was going to hit the Santee Alley. Yep, you just never know what you'll find up and down street corners. And this is one of them. Actually, this little, uh, this little alleyway kind of reminds me of being in Catalina. A lot of their little like turn off streets are like this in Catalina. But that's pretty much the end of it. I just figured, you know, being as cool as this, uh, this thing is, I had to show you since I was down here. So let's go head off to my appointment. That guy up there twirling his mustache. And if you're upset with me for going to Clifton's two days in a row, I hope this makes up for it. Like I said, normally I wouldn't do something like that, but I was just so excited to go last night. And then when it wasn't exactly what I thought it was gonna be, I was more intrigued to come see it during the day. And since I had to be down here anyway, and they had a br brunch special, I figured why not? Makes so much sense to do it, so. Hope you guys have enjoyed this little uh, jaunt around downtown today. Here's the uh, famous alleyway from the most famous fight scene of all time from uh, They Live, right down that alley. If you guys uh, didn't see that vlog when I did the They Live filming locations, go watch it. It was one of my early ones. But we see Roddy go walking right by this athletic club. Look at that guy up there just lounging. Got the life. I'm feeling mild little sprinkles, so we'll see what happens. I have a feeling when I'm leaving, it's gonna be pouring rain. Oh yeah. Definitely raining. Definitely started raining the last block. This is where I'm going today, right here. That was a long, long process. Well, it looks like it rained a little bit, or it sprinkled a little bit, but it's done now, so... I guess that whole time I was getting my MRI... That was not a fun process, I'll be honest. They had me lay down on my stomach with my face down in a Superman pose with my arms out while they took this, uh, this MRI, but it took forever. So when he finally got done, both arms were asleep and I couldn't get up. <laughs> So let's go home, see what Jaw's up to. Probably throwing a party. I spoke too soon, I'm feeling sprinkles already. Well, it definitely rained over here, jeez. But you know what? The luck of the draw, I barely got any of it. It all happened while I was in my doctor's appointment. That never happens. For me to escape a calamity, that never happens. Now my only other request is that in the few blocks it's gonna take me to get home that nobody takes a corner super fast and just douses me in a puddle of water. Fingers crossed. This is in our lobby by the uh, 
where the mail gets delivered. I don't know if that's supposed to be sending a message to the mailman or what. <laughs> Yep, you're right. This is the right way. Nice jacket, Jaw. Skull and crossbones. We have one of those that, um, one of the loops where you put the leash on has ripped. So I might, uh, I might do a giveaway for that. I know there are weird uh, dog people out there that love stuff like that. And I wasn't gonna throw it away. <clears throat> but we got him a replacement, so. <sighs> Guys, it has been a bad day. I have been patiently for three weeks waiting for this girl that took my headshots. Remember when I took my headshots back on uh, February 11th? Yeah, it's now March 5th. And I have still not got the finished pictures. Um, I have been patiently waiting. I am... That is not my best virtue, is patience. I am never patient. But I have been, um, because two days after I got done with the photos, she was able to send me the proofs. My agent and I picked the photos that we wanted, and all she had to do was tweak them and send them back. And it has been three weeks since then. And I contacted her last week, and she said she'd have them done by the end of the weekend, last weekend. And now it's been... Eight days since then, I've emailed her or texted her three times, and she won't respond. So basically, I'm out of the money that um, I paid for my headshots, and I don't have new headshots. Which makes it really difficult to book new work when you don't have current headshots, and a photographer has stolen your money. So, unfortunately, I'm pretty bummed out today. I really like took the wind out of my sails because I was really looking forward to auditioning and getting things back on course and it's really hard when somebody scams you and rips you off. So it's been a bit of a bummer. So um yeah, I just figured I'd tell you because I try and keep you guys informed with what's going on. And uh her name is Nicole Samsung. Almost like Samsung except S O M. And uh yeah. Don't ever use her for your headshots. Don't ever um, hire her as a photographer. And, yeah, unfortunately, I made the mistake. Uh, most of the photographers out in Los Angeles want to be paid in cash. And so that was just no surprise. And um, it's just unfortunate that she decided to take a uh, poor actor and take advantage of them. Um, and it's sad because I look at her Facebook page and she's, posting pictures of all these other photo shoots she's been doing since then and people that are getting ready to do photo shoots with her and um, she just can't seem to even bother responding to me so it's really unfortunate so now I have to figure out a way to raise more money to get headshots again and man I'm I'm almost ready to cuss but I'm not going to I'm just really bummed you guys are all on the wrong thing. You're all doing the same thing. Whenever I have a rough day, man, I can always watch Joey's podcast, and at least gives me a little bit of hope for the next day. Second, perfect. They turned that back to me. Well, guys, hope you had a great night. And uh, one thing I can promise you is that tomorrow we will not be going to Clifton's Cafeteria again. From Hollywood, California, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion saying, "Have a good night."